World Rally Championship returns to the country of Jordan to compete at the lowest place on earth as crews descend below sea level to the Dead Sea Resort, ready to tackle the third gravel event in a row on the championship calendar. Many tourists are attracted to the salty waters of the Dead Sea, but Jordan holds many other treasures. Ford Abu Dhabi duo Miko Hirvonen and co-driver Yamo Leitinen set out to discover the lost city of Petra, where many famous films have been shot, including Indiana Jones. So now we're entering at the Petra, and of course, this is why we are here. Indiana Jones. Here we are, Jordan, Petra, and our trip. Let's just get the rally started and see what happens then. Miko may want the rally to get started as soon as possible, but that is easier said than done. The WRC trucks containing everything you need to run an event had to take a different route than planned from Portugal and are heading by boat to the port of Haifa in Israel, instead of docking in Syria, which is what normally happens. 37 trucks in total containing cars, tools, parts through to television and timing equipment are on the vessel. And fortunately, the boat suffered some problems along the way and 24 hours before the event is due to get underway, the service park is still empty and the boat has not docked. Logistics coordinator John Millington talks us through all that has happened since Portugal concluded. Well, the initial rerouting was as a result of the current situation in Syria, because our original plans was to go via Syria and drive into Jordan. However, with the problems that were happening in Syria, um, it was deemed not safe really to ask people to drive through that part of the world. So everything was rerouted to come through Israel. And since then, that seems to have been posing a little problem or two. Um, basically, around about with the boat that we're using to come down here. Uh, first of all, it was late getting into Italy to pick everything up. Then, secondly, one of the engines broke on it, so now it's running on one engine. And I'm not sure exactly what the last reason or the last excuse is, but I'm sure it'll be something good. So we're just waiting for that to arrive now into Israel, and then we've just got the uh, issue of getting stuff from Israel over into Jordan. Literally everything is in one boat. As the team awaits news on the revised schedule for the event, we catch up with team co-drivers Yamo Leitinen and Mika Antela. Boys, you've just finished the recce here in Jordan. Slightly unusual this time around because your recce cars are out at sea and you've had to use other cars this weekend. How has that been, Yamo? Well, different. <laughs> no trip meters, no cameras, no proper seats, no proper belts. But OK, still reasonable good cars and this rally is not so bad. The roads are pretty smooth. It hasn't been the worst case scenario. If, if that was in a Greece or, for example, Sardinia, we would have been in a bigger problem. And the good thing is that we've been here a few years already, so we know our way around. If it was a new rally, it would have been really, really difficult not to make mistakes on the road checks, and especially on the states when they are not arrowed or chunks and marked. So it's Wednesday now. According to the schedule, we should have started the rally tomorrow morning. You guys would have been heading out pretty <coughs> early. Recce's done for you now. What is the plan from Yamo and Mika this afternoon? Cleaning base notes. Watching videos, for me at least. Yeah, have the same plan. Plenty of work to do still. So no sunbathing by the pool for you guys. It's all work, work, work. Yeah, I think the sun has gone down when we are ready to go to the pool. The news has been changing hour by hour on the arrival of the trucks. We find out from Malcolm Wilson and Gerard Quinn what the plan for the rally is after all the delays. 
Yeah, I've just had uh, confirmation just prior to coming here that um, the, basically the shakedown will take place tomorrow afternoon now between 12.30 and 2.30 and then the ceremony will start will be at 5 o'clock which means that uh, there's no stages at all tomorrow but I think the rally will run as per schedule on uh, Friday and Saturday. It's, it's just a shame that we've lost those 70 kilometres on the first day but you know it's, it's all part of the challenge, it's why we came here, you know Ford has been committed right from the start to come to Jordan and to support the rally, you know, we've uh, had difficult circumstances in getting here, but, um, you know, for us it's important to be here to participate and to compete in the rally, and I guess part of that challenge is now uh, seeing the rally pan out uh, as it is. What happens now in terms of the strategy from the team with one day missing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. There it goes. There's your strategy. <laughs> Flat out. <laughs> Sorry, that was the truck sign on the right. <laughs> That's Godbur's truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the strategy, Vic. That that's, that's it. Flat, flat out. <laughs> and just as we finish, Malcolm hears of more delays. Oh my God! Just contacted John Godber, still at port and not moving. Hello, I'm in it. So, so what's happened now then? The news was that the trucks were still at the port in Haifa. They eventually cleared customs after six hours and finally got moving at just before seven o'clock on Wednesday evening. The team will now work through the night to get everything ready for competition on Friday. It will be a long night ahead for the Ford Abu Dhabi World Rally Team.